Hey guys, welcome to another video on next generation sequencing data analysis. In the previous video, we installed R and uh, R Studio, and in this video, we're going to install TCR. Uh, actually, this is a, the name of a R package for analyzing immune cell sequencing data, specifically TCR, T cell receptor sequencing data, and immunoglobulin sequencing data. So, how do you install a package? You could uh, go down here into packages, you could click this right here and then click install and choose the repository you want to install from cron is fine and if you type in the names of the package you will already get a suggestion it's written tc and r is in capital letters so you could just click install from here for some people this is a bit uh for some people they do this and they click install but it still doesn't work they won't have the package here in their library so if that doesn't work you can also do it manually by typing in install dot packages open brackets close brackets then in in quotation marks you write the same thing tc capital letter r you press enter and it should install the whole package and all dependencies everything else it needs for the package to run if that still doesn't work you can find the package online just google it and download the file in dot tar dot gz and then you just click this and you choose the uh, choose the file from here so once, our, uh, once you've installed TCR, you can now load the library. You have to load the package. Whatever packages you want to use in this session, you have to load it. You can load it by checking the box here, or you just uh, write library, uh, open brackets, close bra brackets. You don't have to do, use qu quotation marks this time. You write TCR, and there you go. It loads the package for you. You see it loaded every other package that it requires to run as well. And that's it, TCR is loaded. Yeah, so if we search TCR here, there should be a tick on it now. There you go, there's the tick, and this is the package. Let's now find the documentation for this um, uh, for this package, and you can do this by, I have it open here, but you can find it by just Googling TCR, I've already written it, TCR R package. Press enter, and it should get you to this website right here, I don't know how, how to pronounce this, Vignette or whatever, but this is basically the um, the help file uh, for or the documentation for this program. And there it says how to use it and what the package does and all of the different um, commands are listed here. So now we need sequencing data to, anal uh, to be analyzed. I have downloaded new sequencing data, so I'll just quickly show you guys. In my files browser here I go to this is my home directory that we've been looking at throughout to in all the other videos prior to this and if you remember I have a folder here that says NCBI public SRA and here are my uh, sequencing files right the fastq files that we have then aligned and so and so on uh, but you see now I have more files than you remember from the last video and that is because I downloaded three more .sra files. I've described how to download SRA files in the second video of this video series. And I'll also um, link it in the description below, a link where I've described this in a written format. So you can see how I downloaded it. I've downloaded three new TCR sequencing data files. Um, and you have to download those as well if you want to use the same ones as I do, or you use your own sequencing data if you have any. So just choose three okay just choose three should be the minimum because i want to show the full potential of this package um, or follow the steps in the description below that explains how to install uh, how to download these srr files and then convert them and to fastq and then align them uh, using my xcr um, eventually leaving a txt file those three sequences i have named uh, sorry uh, three uh, fastq files i have named file1.txt, file2.txt, and file3.txt. And we will now load this into this uh, package, uh, into into this, uh, sorry, into our global environment in the R package. For this, we go through the documentation, and there we read that input parsing, this is what we need to do. We have these files that we've aligned with myxcr, which is one of the supported file formats in TCR. And we need to parse this now. So this it takes the format of this file 
and it changes the format to be able to work with with TCR. And you do, you do, you do this using this command. It says it right here, parse.myxcr. So the first thing you have to do is set this directory to a working directory. We go to more, set as a working directory. Yeah, you see the command actually being executed here as well. So we could have just written as well, set wd, open brackets, close brackets, and in between, in quotation marks, the path of the folder. Once this is set into as our working directory, we type in parse dot, it already suggests the different file formats that it supports, uh, but we need my XCR, open brackets, close brackets, in quotation marks, you write file1.txt or however your file is called. There we go. I forgot, of course, uh, this now just output it or whatever that a command is going to do into our console. So what we want to do is we want to assign all of this, like I described in the vi uh, previous video before, to an object. We call this object file one, and we assign it with the arrow. And now we write the same thing: parse my xcr uh, file one dot txt. Now, in our global environment, you see this data being saved, this data frame basically being saved as the object file one. If you want to click it to see what it's inside, you have to just change the, uh, the view here to list. Now you can click this and look at that. It opens the actual table. I'm just going to go full screen. You see it parsed it and now you have every clonotype. Yeah, it looks at the CDR3 region, which is the most uh, important region when you look at TCR data. It has parsed this data um, and it, it has it gives you the count for example this clonotype occurs 24,000 times and makes up 27 percent um, of that whole repertoire and you know this is the amino acid sequence of that cdr3 region these are the v genes used or this is the v gene used this is the gj gene used so these are the informations that you get from there we do the same thing now for the other two files as well okay i did this for you now uh just quickly I did that while I paused the recording. So now you have the three, uh, three files here. Something else that has changed is this view. I opened up, I clicked new, and then I clicked our script. It opened up a text editor vin window right here. And this is basically, you know, cause this is a console. This is the, like a terminal where you actually execute the commands. This is just like a text editor where you can now basically keep whatever you've written and you keep track of all the commands you have written and you can write an actual script that you could also automate later on. You learn more about that um, at nextgenerationsequencinghq.com. Um, now, this is, these are the commands that we've already written. If you want to execute a command, you have to hold down, CT you, go, you go to that line wherever you are, you hold down CTRL and then press enter. And then in that case, it executes the command down here. So now we have these three files. Here you already get some information on it, like this file has 748 um, rows, so lines, and that also means clonotypes in this case. So you have 660 clonotypes, and here you have 4,058 clonotypes. All three of these don't have a lot of clonotypes. Usually if you have sequencing data, you might, you know, this. so this is obviously some special mouse, um, uh, you know, the data that we got was from, from a transgenic mouse, it was sorted, uh, sorted regulatory T cells. So in all of those cases, that those probably are the reason for why you have a limited amount of clonotypes. But that's not important. We want to try out this package now. What can it do? Once we've parsed it, we can now actually get into doing the analyzing and getting nice graphs such as uh, these right here, you know, you can make these graphs very easily. You can um, get statistical data, just print statistical data out and have it um, as an output format, just saved as a text file with a lot of information about what you have in your files. So all of this will be discussed in the next video where we will start to do actual analysis of our uh, three files here using the TCRR package. If you don't know what's going on, go ahead and check out the videos prior to this one where we build up to this point. Go ahead uh, to nextgenerationsequencinghq.com where I have all the videos there as well. And there's also a course that teaches you how to write a bioinformatical pipeline script that you can execute and that automates a lot of these things that we're doing here. 
Okay, see you in the next video.